Good afternoon and welcome to the Red Raider Coaches Show. Uh, I'd like to thank all of Raider Nation for joining us. Uh, myself, Brent Johnson. Uh, Joe Hayes is, uh, couldn't be with us this week. His schedule has changed just a little bit. On uh, hiatus, I think is what they call it. On uh, hiatus. hiatus. <laughs> Along with uh, head football coach uh, Kyle Lankford. I want to thank him for joining us on uh, this midweek special. Um, coach, you know, we uh, traveled over to Savannah, something that I, I always dread doing. Um, I, I tell you, I like the venue. It's a unique experience for our kids, you know, being on a, a college campus, uh, the turf field, big stadium, and uh, it's, a, it's a big stage for our kids, an opportunity to go over there and face a, a Benedictine team that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Well, you talk about this, too, and so what we try to tell them, uh, even in pregame, you know, when you grow up as a kid, you dream of playing in some stadium like that that holds, you know, 15,000 or whatever. You dream of, of playing on, in a nice stadium and, and on TV against a great team. And so we got all that that we wished for. Now, the score was not what we wished for, but we got that experience. And you think about how many high school kids never get that experience to play in a college stadium and play on TV and play against the number one team in the state. So, I mean, to go over there and play them is an honor. Right. I mean, we don't we don't necessarily enjoy playing them, and we didn't enjoy the outcome. But it's an honor to be on the field with a team of that caliber, who uh, you know very well could win their third state championship in four years. So it was a real honor, and and you know we played hard, and uh, so that that's I mean that's it on that deal. Well, you know when you're preparing for that week, you prepare just like for any other team um, in any other situation. Um, but again, we know what we're going up against, uh, uh, the defending state champion uh, out of our region. And, and I guess that's something that we can be proud of, uh, the competition level that's in our in Region 2AA. Um, and, and you said something uh, a week ago, or maybe two weeks ago, that, that I really uh, thought about it uh, more and more of how the fact that, you know, what Benedictine has done is raise the bar, raise the level yeah. of play of every team in our region. Um, to make and, it more of a dogfight. And to take it a step further, I talked to a coach uh, within this region who's a very, oh, I respect a lot. And he said, you know, in his years of being in this region, it's been a long time, he said the one thing that has, that has grown and really changed throughout every single team is now you have to have a coaching staff that can go. You've got to have a good coach. He said, because if you don't, you get run out of the region mm -hmm. because everybody's good. Everybody's got good coaches. And everybody's got players in this region, and there's not a weak sister. You know, everybody in this thing is good. Everybody's talented, and everybody brings back players. That's right. You know, we think about our guys, and we're so proud, and we're really proud of the guys that we had returning. Well, guess what? Everybody else in the region is proud of their guys they got returning too. So it comes down to the smallest of things and the smallest of margins. But uh, but I do think Benedictine's forced everybody to have to be better, because because if you don't, you're gonna get run out of the game quick. Well, it's. You know, every team is going to have a, a down year, you know, especially a, a, a county school, I'll say it like that, a public type school. And, you know, we see matters of having a little bit of a down year. And in Bryan County, we've seen, they, and we'll talk more about them, they're struggling a little bit, even though they've got the, the players in place. They're uh -huh. trying to get that coaching, the coaching staff trying to, I think you said, implement a new system yeah. for them. Uh, so they've struggled a bit this year. But you talk about Swainsboro, who was marginal last year. Um, come on a little strong there at the end um, with a new coaching staff this year with some of the same players right. um, that's had a, a tremendous season. And, you know, and Vidalia, they're Vidalia. Yep. And uh, so, you know, it, it's uh, – back to just reiterate that is the fact that they, they've raised our level. Um, now, I'm, uh, you know, there'll come a time maybe when that that won't be uh, – Necessary anymore, right. but uh, but that's that's in the future. But uh, what are some positives you take from that game uh, over in Savannah the other night, Coach? Well, I'll tell you this: we didn't, uh, you know, for one was the number of kids that were ready to go. You know, normally we get a lot of mysterious injuries and sicknesses before Benedictine, and I, you know some of them are very legitimate. But sometimes you get guys that you you'll see them one week, and then that Benedictine week you might not see them, you know, for a while. But that was not the case. Our kids were excited to go into the game. Our kids were ready to play. Uh, there wasn't any fear. You know, I've walked down the field before with with teams going against Benedictine, and maybe it may be justified. There'd be you see a little fear in their eyes, and we didn't see any of that. And then uh, the biggest thing was I thought we played with a lot of poise, even when things went bad. 
they, people didn't come unraveled and go right. unglued. Everybody was kind of kept playing. We did good things, and we obviously we did some bad things. And then after halftime, everybody settled down, and I thought we really played good. It was about a five-minute stretch hmm. that we were the better team. That's right. And uh, obviously we know a five-minute stretch doesn't make a ball game. Right. But I was proud about that because there's been many teams that laid down right. uh, at that point, and it would have been easy to do. But uh, she, we played with a little energy and played hard the second half. And what was pleasing to me, and this was a negative for some people, but, you know, they didn't pull the starters out until the last series yeah. of the ball game. And, and I, I take that as a compliment, right. to be honest with you. Uh, I don't want you putting your JV in the second quarter. I want you to have to play, and and, and that's good. And uh, I think we learned from it, and I think uh, – we certainly got better from it. Well, I mentioned the other day when, when they kicked to us and we, we went down the field like we were the defending state champion. Right. You know, we had a, a little slip, a, literally a slip from the from the running back that, that maybe costed us a potential first down and, and kept moving. It wasn't his fault necessarily. It's that turf trying to get used yep. to that. Um, I think it was a couple times we slipped. But, you know, and that's part of the game, uh, especially in that situation. Um, but but that, everybody looked real comfortable. Absolutely you comfortable. Know, everybody and, looked and comfortable. Cooper looked really, looked really good. Uh, Routes were good. Protection was good. And then you sit there and look, and we had two brand new starting offensive mm -hmm. linemen up front out of necessity. Yeah. And uh, you know that ain't fair to any kid right. to start your first game as offensive right. lineman against a Division One defensive tackle. That's not fair. That's right. But guess what? Life ain't fair either. And the kid jumped in there, and I thought, is that I'm talking about Christian primarily right here? I thought he jumped in there and did a real good job. And uh, Christian's got a couple more years of yeah. good football ahead of him. He and, does, uh, and, he... and he'll get another chance this Friday. And uh, we expect there'll be improvement uh, from last week. And you talk about the first few minutes of that second half. You were right. We we were the better team, and I could I was on the uh, home side, and it was visibly Coach Britt was visibly upset with his players because they were getting outplayed, yeah, uh, and out hustled. And you know that's that's a rarity with that team. Right. Um, as talented as they are, they're disciplined. They do what they're coached to do. Um, but for the first uh, five or six minutes when we scored, you know, 13 points there, you know, that's, that was, uh, was pretty impressive. Well, and, and thinking about their situation, you look at a team that's won, what, 20, um, it's 24, 25 yeah, in a row. Good. And I, and I know talent is not a question there. They're plenty talented. And, uh, when you win that many games in a row, then you start dealing with some complacency mm -hmm. and you start dealing with a situation where you, where you feel like you're so much better than everybody, you don't have to play as hard. Right. And I think that might have crept in on them a little bit in the second half, and then uh, you know, and then they snap back to a team sure. just like a champion does. That's right. But uh, you know, I'm not disappointed at all our kids, and uh, we just wish we had one or two more breaks. I kept thinking when we cut it to 27, I said, well, if we make a play here, I think we could cut it down to 20, and then you know, then mm -hmm. you got yourself some something interesting to look mm -hmm. at anyway. And uh, just didn't quite do it, but, but I'm still proud of our kids, and I'm proud of their effort, and I'm proud of the class they play with, a lot of class. Well, that, that's that's the most important thing. You stressed that uh, from day one, Coach, when you took over, that um, that's how you expected our boys to play. That's how you want them to represent our team and our school and our community, and um, and we're thankful for that. And just a, a couple more uh, you know comments uh, on this uh, particular game. Um, uh, Injury wise, I know we knew what we were, who we were missing going into the game. Um, I remember one particular number seven that, that had an injury. Uh, but we'll ha where do we stand overall after, uh, heading into this this Brian game, in which we'll we'll talk about after the break? Well, Castillo, he did he rolled up his ankle really bad, a high ankle sprain against Benedictine, and it really was not anything on their behalf. It's more the turf, mm -hmm. and uh, so he will certainly be out against Brian, which is a huge huge loss. He had a mm -hmm. fantastic year. And we're not even sure we'll get him back for the Mutter game, but he'll be out this week. And uh, Dawson will be out again this week, coming off a bad knee injury. There's no sense in the world I'm not going, you know. And I told him that th this morning. I said, I, it's not that I don't think you can get out there, but why would I put a kid out there when their health would be in jeopardy? Right. And we ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. When somebody's 100%, somebody's as core close to it, right. we'll be glad to play them. But, a guy that's coming off a bad knee injury like that, we ain't going to risk it. And so we know those two, and then we know, obviously, Jesus uh, still be out this week. And uh, we've had a real bad run of stomach issues this week. Mm. So we may have three more starters out with a virus mm. that have missed practice this week. So it, it's, been a, it's been a trying week. But, uh, but on the bright side, you got the young guys like Xavier Bell 
and uh, Isaiah Grant who've jumped in there and they're ready to play That's right. and they're hungry to play and they're going to play with tremendous effort and they're going to play really well too. Well, two, two players and then we'll, again we'll, we'll go to break here. Uh, you mentioned Xavius. Uh, he made some plays on defense. Outstanding plays. plays that I hadn't seen. You know, typically we see him coming in and playing offensively right. getting a few, uh, few handoffs but man he played fast and, uh, and effective. He's a, the, the, you know, he's a size mismatch obviously a cornerback because of his height but I tell you he runs really well mm -hmm. And he made a couple tackles chasing down pursuit from the backside, which is unbelievable for a cornerback. And what that leads us to believe is he plays with tremendous effort. That's it. You know, and that's what we're looking for. And Isaiah's a guy that's certainly capable, and he'll play offense and defense for us Friday night. But he's a guy, a four or five guy, that's plenty strong, and, and well, he's, he's a good-looking kid in the uniform. And he's going to do exactly. a great. He's going to do a great job for us. I feel really good about him. And one other player um, that I thought that looked looked really good and very surprisingly comfortable was when Mason Michael came yeah, in. Yeah, I thought he did too. Uh, now, now, was he comfortable and excited, you know, the first <laughs> quarter? No, probably not. He's over here, you know, a little concerned, as anybody would be. But I told him, I said, you got to play some tonight. We've got to get you in there some because you'll never play against a better team. Right. Probably in his four years, he'll never play against a team better than them. And uh, that's amazing to think about that in the first time you play as a freshman, this will be the best team you'll ever play yeah. against. But, but that's probably the case, and I thought he did a good job and held up well. And, we're going to get him some snaps these last two games, too, and uh, and uh, compliment what Cooper does, and I think that's you know, two good players. Okay. Well, we're 4-4 four and four as we come off uh, that loss against Benedictine, 0-4, uh, or excuse me, 1-3 uh, and three in region play. Uh, excuse me, 1-4 one and, four one and four in region nine. play. Um, and we got two more region games left, and we're going to talk more about that next upcoming game after the break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to the Red Raider Coaches Show. Myself, Brent Johnson, along with Coach uh, Kyle Langford. Um, we are two games away from completing a season, and uh, which has flown by as it always does, Coach. You know, we're, we're talking about this stuff in August, and we had two preseason games, a week off, and then the regular season started. And here we are, uh, almost in November, and uh, the weather's kind of getting, finally getting some football weather. Yes, sir. And we only have two games left, uh, but we're going to head over to Pembroke, Georgia, Friday night and face a Redskin team that's uh, struggled on paper, struggled on film, but that don't mean anything uh, when you line it up on Friday night, does it? No, and there, I tell you what, traditionally speaking, it's not an easy place for us to go and win. Uh, we've had our struggles there in the past, and they've got a you know good athletic team. Uh, I kind of like what they're doing in the spread. The quarterback's a three-year starter, and I tell you what, any time you've got a kid like that, then what's around him, he only makes it better. Mm -hmm. And that concerns me a little bit. Uh, he had a couple, a couple of really good runs in some of the film we watched. And he's a good, he's a good runner. And you, just looking at him, you'd guess he's more of a passing type guy. But, man, he pulled it down, ran an 80-yard touchdown against Mudder, which is unbelievable because they run well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got some good receivers to go along with it. And they're huge up front. They've got two kids that look like 370 pounds. And uh, we certainly don't have anybody that looks like that. But... Uh, they're, they're just monsters, man, and, and so we'll have to play well, and we're going to have to play hard, and I know they've had us circled on the calendar yeah. for a while, and so there won't be no shortage of excitement and energy. I mean, we better be energetic. Well, I've got a confession to make. I've never, I've never went to a football game over there since they've been in our region, and I'll tell you why. It's because our 
I'm blaming it on our successful softball right. program because we've always played them. It seems like in the time which I'll be traveling to Columbus, uh, plug the, the Lady Raiders. They are headed to Columbus in the Elite Eight. We'll be broadcasting live on the NFHS network uh, the next couple of days. They're guaranteed two games as a double elimination. Mm -hmm. But so I won't be able to travel there. I don't, I don't panic. Uh, the, the game will be broadcast. I'm sending some, some students uh, that are knowledgeable enough to get it done. They'll be supervised by someone. And uh, so we'll be broadcasting simultaneously, uh, hopefully, uh, softball and football. But I've never been in, I've been in that environment. I've heard some of the horror stories of, of some, some teams that went over there and we just... Uh, well, for, uh, for us, it hadn't been a bad experience with the logistics. And, you know, it's an easy place to get into. They have great facilities for us. Uh, our problem's been with us yeah. and the way we play because I will tell you this and I'll promise you this when you go to Bryan County they're not going to back down from you and they're not going to be scared I don't care who you are and they're going to come out and play hard and that is the fact and uh, I don't know how it is on the road because I haven't traveled with them but I know when you go to their place they expect to win and they're going to come out and they're going to fight you and battle you tooth and nail and, and I don't expect any different. Well even though they struggled uh, and, and we've, as far as wins-wise, we've struggled, but we have a lot of pride, just like they're going to have a lot oh, of pride sure. going into their place. Um, and, you know, you know, you commented to me, uh, maybe one of the news outlets asked you the question, well, Coach, what do you tell your kids? I mean, what are you playing for? Explain to the people what we're playing for. I'm playing for a winning season, and uh, any time you have a winning season, it's special. I mean, you, you take out a, a Georgia map and a pen, and you do about a 100-mile radius, and you start looking at teams that's got winning records this year, and you see it's kind of hard to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know coffee's had an outstanding year, but you look, you look in that 100-mile radius and see how many teams would love to have a winning record right now. I mean, you look at Pro Block Valley Austin with three wins. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to win in this business. It's hard to win in this region and this league we're in in AA. And uh, I think if we come out of this thing, uh, especially five and four after Friday night, then we're going to be real, real tickled to be in that position because uh, I've been on the other side of the coin there too, where you're sitting there 0 and, 0 and 9, 0 and 8, 1 and 8. I've been on that side too, and, and this is, trust me, this might not be where we want to be, but it's better than where we could be. Yeah. And uh, anytime your kids play hard and they play with class, you ain't never disappointed in them. And that's the, that's the way I look at it. You know, uh, we can't play the if and coulda and woulda and shoulda game. If we did that, we'd never go home. But uh, I'm proud of where our kids play, and I'm going to be even more proud with the people we put on the field Friday night and we we'll finish this season like we need to, you know. Well, just take another minute or two and uh, tell folks uh, watching at home what they can expect if they go to the game or if they watch the game live uh, offensively uh, from Brian and, and maybe defensively real quick. Offensively, be, I mean, it's going to be somewhat similar to the layman or what we do. A lot of times they'll be too wide and with, a, with a up back, he may be up tight to the line of scrimmage, he could be back. They run a lot of speed sweep, a lot of quarterback counter off of the speed sweep. Uh, they throw it around a little bit like we do, a lot of verticals and outs and things of that nature. And then on short yardage, they're going to pack it in there tight like, the, like we're more used to seeing with Brian Kennedy. It might be two tight ends with two wings or an unbalanced look, and they're going to run that wedge and that, try to get that thing in there. Uh, defensively, they're going to be a 4-4 loop. So they'll have four down linemen, four linebackers, three guys in secondary. They will roll that back sometimes to go to cover two in obvious passing situations. Right. Um, but, you know, they're very sound. I think the guy's doing a good job. Now, but, is he a former coach there or is he brought in? Not to my knowledge. I, as, far as, I, as far as I know, uh, this is the first year, first year, first year coach for him. Okay. And he kept a lot of staff that was there. Right. So defensively, they really haven't changed very much at all. Okay. But offensively, they've changed quite a bit. And then, you know, when you come in and do something new, it's not like you're going to snap your fingers and go from, you know, too tight, double wing, and snap your fingers and be a great spread team. That's not the way it works. And, and he's learning, and they're learning. And shoot, uh, with, the, with the tradition they've had last five years of being pretty good, right. uh, he'll get it figured out. We just hope it ain't this Friday. This ain't this Friday. That's exactly right. Well, following this Friday, we do have one more home game, and it is uh, we'll, there'll be a show next week to, you know, to talk about all this. But... Uh, just a real quick intro. Uh, we'll be back home to finish the season out with Metter, and it'll be senior night, which is super important for uh, for the for not only the football, but you have uh, cheerleading, you have the band um, that we're we're very proud of and proud for their support and what their programs do, to, just to add to um, to what our, our football program is trying to do. And this um, will and this senior class will go down as one of the winningest senior classes in the last 25 years. That's right. Uh, 
you know, we come off a, a, a six win, a five win, and then hopefully whatever comes of this year, and then a two win last year. And that's a lot of wins for a senior class uh, when you put it in historical reference that, that's of right. four year blocks. That's right. And so we're proud of them, and we want to, we certainly want to send them out like we have all year. We've been packed out all year. Yeah. There hasn't been one crowd that you look at and say, you know what, I'm a little disappointed. Every night, every home game has been jam packed. And the people are really supporting these young men. And the good thing about it, it's going to be nice and cool. You bring your blankets out and, and cover your head up. And that's right. if you holler loud enough, you don't stay cold, you know. That's what I've learned. <laughs> well, my daddy would be pretty warm. Yeah, I, I sweat. <laughs> I'll be sweating, you know. I'll holler hey, so much. Yeah, he's going to get me for that. But, uh, but yeah, he, that, that's uh, this is football time, you know. I know football starts in August. But this is this is a football time of the year, and we want to encourage you, Raider Nation, to come out this Friday night. Um, if you're not in Columbus supporting uh, the Lady Raiders playing for a state championship, definitely show up to Pembroke and, and root these guys on. Well, we we got enough people in this town. We send half of y'all over there. That's half right. of y'all come over here with us, That's and we'll we'll have a good turnout, and and we'll raise Kane in two town. That's right, that Friday, and uh, make some noise, and that and, and that's what you want. And we've come to expect out of out of our community and out of, out of our out of our athletic programs. Well, you don't doubt them. That's the one good thing about our fans. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to doubt them, because when you tee it up, they're going to be there just like they were in Savannah. You know, we had a good crowd show up in Savannah, and they were loud, loud, loud. <laughs> and that's good. And uh, they'll be there. They'll be in Columbus, and they'll be in Pembroke uh, Friday. I, I have no doubt in my mind. Well, we want to thank all of Raider Nation for being supportive of. Uh, and a lot of folks behind the scenes, and I'm not about to call out any names like Joe Wood off the top of his head, but um, I want to thank all of our, you know, the, our big, what we would call a corporate business sponsorships um, that, that pony up some, some dollar bills that really support this program. But it's, it's, it's the people behind the scenes that make things happen. That's who we, uh, we most depend on, and I uh, want to thank all of those people uh, from, from, from the food and to the people that provide the food and the help with the breakfasts and all that good stuff. Um, and you but, talk about the people and, and the people that travel. Mm -hmm. I've had I talked to five people that's trying to plan their travel over there on when we leaving, you know. Mm -hmm. And they don't have kids in the program or anything. They're excited about going. They want to go to the game and they enjoy it and, and they hang on uh, with the Red Raiders. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be a little bit of vice versa. There's gonna be people with some tablets and phones out, you know, watching one maybe one game in one eye and the other one with the other, right. and that's good too. There's, there's a lot of support in this town. There's a lot of support for every athletic team as well as these students and these programs and the arts and everything. You that's know? right. And that's, what, that's what's good to know. That's what it's about. So, again, we, we thank you for, uh, for your support. We hope that you'll come out to uh, Pembroke um, about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes uh, in a car, a little bit longer on a bus. But um, head over there and let's support this Raider team as we're looking for two more wins to get to that six and four mark, um, which Coach elaborated a moment ago as a – it's a, it's a pretty good record uh, and for any school, much less Bacon County. I know he said we're not maybe in a, some of our minds not quite where we, we wanted to be, but it's a win is a win is a win, and uh, to finish uh, the season off uh, as a winner, uh, we're guaranteed a no worse than 500 if we get a win behind us on yeah, Friday night. If we, get, if we get a win on Friday, we're guaranteed no less than that. But um, but I think that will propel us next week as we host uh, Meta for that final home game. But I want to thank you for joining us today uh, on the Red Raider Coaches Show. And on behalf of Coach uh, Kyle Lankford and myself, Brent Johnson, again, we thank you for your support. And go Raiders.